Liberty Me, here with Thaddeus Russell, author of Renegade History of the United States. Thad, it's great to talk to you again. Hey, Kyle. Good to see you. I love talking to people uh, with, with whom I've spoken before because, uh, you know, it's just so much more relaxed. I, I feel like I can be much uh, a much bigger idiot and it's just no big deal, you know. You're never an idiot to me. Thank you so much. That's as long to as, as, totally wrong, but whatever. As long as you keep agreeing with me. That's, that's, that's the key, isn't it? And keep laughing at my jokes. We'll so, be fine. <laughs> <clears throat> so you, uh, you have this, uh, this thing going right now where you're running for Congress. Uh, someone has suggested <laughs> to you that you run for Congress, and so you've decided to go over all of your policy positions on, on your Facebook channel. Uh, can you tell us about some of those policy positions and uh, why, why you think that they're so important for, for Thad Russell, the, the congressman? Yeah, well, so the first, first, well, the plank I haven't actually publicized yet. This is breaking news. Okay. Um, the legislation introducing National Richard Pryor Day. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's sensible stuff. Like, you know, uh, bringing all the troops home, you know, closing all the military bases, radically slashing the military budget. I mean, I, the thing was, it was funny. I, I proposed, I, I sort of floated the idea of 50% cut, which I got actually from Justin Raimondo, mm -hmm. antiwar.com. And of course there was this massive backlash, you know, against that. I mean, people were saying you, you neocon scumbag 50%, you know, it should be 99.9 .9 or a hundred percent. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I, I'll work on it. I was gonna, I was gonna appoint a, a committee to sort of uh, recommend a particular percentage, uh, headed by uh, Angela Keaton and Noam Chomsky. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, whatever they recommend, I will adopt. Uh, you know, I mean, full decriminalization of drugs, all drugs. You know, no taxation, no regulation of them. I mean, what, what, what else do you want to know? It's obvious stuff. This is, this is gonna sell with the public. You you think it's going to sell with the public? It's great. It's it's great stuff. It's absolutely wonderful. It makes you know, All right. So look. Um I'm actually writing a piece for reason right now on uh you know, the left libertarian alliance or maybe non-alliance. But if you think about it, or I was thinking about it, 2013. What happened in 2013, right? So the NSA and I'd say this surveillance state generally was discredited, really, by a left libertarian alliance. I mean, that's what Greenwald and Snowden, that's who they are and their supporters. Um, and the thing that's never talked about, or I've never seen anyone say this, we stopped a war. You know, we stopped the bombing of Syria. That was absolutely a left libertarian alliance in action. In, in, not, and not just on social media and on the Internet, in the streets. I mean, I was at a protest in L.A. with thousands of people, and there were libertarians, and there were good old commies there both, you know, marching together. We stopped that goddamn war. Um, so it's happening. So is there a constituency for this kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that um, on, the, on the sort of not even so far left, and certainly among libertarians, those positions are seen as, you know, commonsensical. I really hope you're right. I mean, you know, I agree with you on the Syria thing. I think that was fantastic. And hopefully that continues with uh, intervention into Ukraine. But, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I, I've been beaten down too many times uh, trying to believe that we could have a candidate or, you know, God forbid, someone actually get elected with the kind of policy positions that you've, uh, you've lined up there. What about decriminalization of drugs? That's becoming completely respectable. You know what we now we know for marijuana it's a majority right support that position. Um, you know for the powder not we're not there yet but we will get there. I don't see any reason to. I think that these positions I really mean this. I think in fifty to seventy five years these will be all mainstream positions. That I mean that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. And then you know and then stuff like here's here's a really good one and libertarians need to like hammer this harder with the left. You know. End regulatory capture. Yes. Right? I mean, that's like whenever I say that to lib liberals and leftists, they're like, yes, absolutely. Great. End subsidies, end regulations that, that help corporations. Fantastic. Like, that's something we should coalesce around right now. And, like, you know, and that's, that's huge. That's massive. 
um, end all regulations that limit competition among businesses. There. Do that. I mean, are liberals for that? They, of course they are. They should be. At least they say they are. Um, so this is, I think, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly think there are considerable constituencies for these positions. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, hopefully with things like uh, the independence on Fox Business that you've right. appeared on quite a few times, you know, those ideas get popularized. And, you know, that's how to really do it, is to spread the knowledge to the point that these things become public opinion. And then maybe a candidate like Thad Russell is viable. Yeah. So... Actually, if you look at the list of my uh, positions, you know, you may, hopefully you noticed, Kyle, mm -hmm. <laughs> that they all are designed to appeal to both the left and libertarians. Right. There's not, I don't think there's one thing on there. May, okay, maybe you know of one. I don't think there's one position <laughs> that shouldn't have a, uh, shouldn't have broad support among the left and libertarians. Explain to me why we need to have a guaranteed basic income. Because I like it. <laughs> because I want one. Because I want one. <laughs> well, seriously, uh, that's part of it. I mean, um, well, no, for me, what's, it, what's one thing that's appealing about it is that, you know, I'm well aware of the history of social welfare being really a trap as much as a safety net. That, you know, when, when the state has given out welfare, it has come with hooks into people's personal lives. Um, it's come out, come with tremendous regulation of the most intimate aspects of people's lives. Um, and that's one of the virtues of the guaranteed annual income proposal is that it comes with none of that. It's no strings attached. It is all citizens are guaranteed check in the mail, period. Sure, um, sure. Rega regardless of their status, regardless of anything else, if they fall below a particular threshold. So, um, you know, I think that's very appealing. And that's, and I first heard about, well, I mean, I guess, I'm trying to think. I mean, so that was uh, an article in Reason about a year ago by Matthew Feeney uh, proposing that, right? So that comes from a libertarian. I know not all libertarians have embraced this, but obviously many have. Um, and the left loves it. The left loves it, as they should. So why, why do you think that libertarians should support it in general? You know, the left obviously loves it, but libertarians who have... Uh, sort of a maybe shady, not shady, but kind of a odd track record with, with programs like that. Yeah, again, because it comes with less uh, regulation of our lives okay. than, well, than traditional welfare programs do. It replaces that, that net, that, that trap of welfare programs with something that's clean. What about just a voluntary social safety net, one based around um, you know, mutual association and, and mutual aid? By the way, it also gets rid of the need for minimum wage. Yeah, that's true. So, so you know, again, something none of us like. I mean, you know, libertarians like, don't like. So um, why not? What was the question? Voluntary what? Sure, sure. I was just thinking a good... Um, well, I mean, a, a good alternative to that would be just a, a voluntary mutual aid network. Oh, you mean outside the state? Yeah, or do you even think that's feasible? Um, uh, you know, so with things like this, you know, like private roads, abolishing the prisons, abolishing the police, you know, anarchist positions, I'm like, sure, let's give it a try. I'm all for it. I'm open to it. Um, until we see that, I would... That's why I favor Medicaid. I mean, until we see a better alternative outside the state, I'm going to have to take that because that's the best thing I have. It's the only way I can get health care, right? Sure. If I'm poor. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's, that's fair. So, but yeah, I'm abs So, you know, I'm all for, um, you know, seriously engaging with those ideas and those proposals. Um, but until we get there, um, sorry, I, I got I to gotta live. That it's been a pleasure as always. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye.